Uh, Stephanie Keller is the Education Projects Manager at the Jane Goodall Institute, where she works on environmental education and service learning with both JGI's Africa programs and the Institute's Environmental and Humanitarian Youth Program, Roots and Shoots. Through these programs, Stephanie helps educators and youth develop successful service projects using community mapping skills and the Roots and Shoots four-step process. Please join me in welcoming Stephanie. Thanks, everyone. Um, so it's actually kind of fun that Brian and I went right after each other since I work uh, getting youth out there doing mapping. So a little bit different than a lot of you. I'm not a cartographer or a GIS analyst. Um, and I don't really make maps very often. What I do is I go out and find tools and resources that I can provide to youth and to educators for them to make maps and develop a better connection and sense of responsibility for the communities that they live in. And so I wanted to put this into a little bit of context. Um, as Karen mentioned, we have a four-step formula or model. And we've been doing most of this four-step for the 20 plus years that Roots and Shoots has been around. Um, except for step two, which I'll get to in a minute. So what we do is we provide resources to inspire youth and get them engaged. So um, as Rebecca mentioned, the street view this morning, we just folded that into our get engaged section to help youth get inspired. And then we help them through mapping identify issues that they can take action on. Then we provide resources and tools for them to take meaningful action, plan and implement community projects, and then to celebrate by measuring their impact and celebrating their successes. So. The mapping part is the brand new part. We used to do community surveys, um, which a lot of youth told us were really, really boring, and they didn't like doing them, and nobody wanted to fill out surveys. And so about four or five years ago, we kind of sat down and were like, OK, the survey thing isn't working. And the youth aren't doing really impactful projects. We're getting a lot of canned food drives and pizza party celebrations. And they're not having a long-term meaningful impact that we want them to have. And so we kind of just looked over to the right at what Africa Programs was doing and what Lillian will talk about um, I think tomorrow or the next day. And we said, oh, look, they're doing this community-based conservation work, and they're doing community mapping, and it's really awesome. And then we said, oh, we can adapt this, and we can make this fit our model. And so we started with a pilot group of youth to let us know if they thought it was cool, if they thought it would work. And then we worked with a couple of focused school systems so that we could see, hey, is this going to work in the education environment? Is this going to work for teachers? Can they figure out how to use this? And will they incorporate this into their service learning practice? And they loved it. We started with these pen and paper maps, which are not spatially accurate for all you mappers out there. These are in no way um, accurate navigational maps. But the teachers loved it because what happened was their projects became way more youth-led and their students became way more aware of the world around them. One teacher reported that her students were 100% more aware, which means that they were not aware at all of what was going on around them before they really started going out and doing these observation activities. Um, but what happened with this was we ran into scalability issues really quickly. You can only do so many in-person trainings where Roots and Shoots is in 130 plus countries. In the United States, we're in every state. There's only seven of us. We can only do so many in-person trainings. And we said, oh, OK, well, now we have this awesome thing. What do we do with it? And then at the same time, we had a lot of teachers coming to us and saying, well, why aren't you doing digital? Why do I have to go get paper and pen? And like my students aren't liking this, and this isn't engaging. You know, What are my other options? And so I came to Geo for Good last year with no idea what I was going to do, um, kind of just looking for a digital mapping tool that would be easy and that I could incorporate. And so that led us to using GME Lite, which became BiMaps recently. And we went with it for a couple of different reasons. Um, the biggest one, you don't have to download anything. Teachers don't like downloading things. A lot of schools have restrictions on that. Getting used to download things is like complicated sometimes. It's also free. Free is really good, as everyone says. Um, and all you have to have is a Google account to access it. And we were also able to really easily meld it into our existing model so that we didn't have to change that much about it. And we didn't have to change anything in what we were already doing with the pen and paper maps to make the digital transition work out well. Um, so this is the first tutorial we put together. We did this in April with some help from Google. <laughs> We put together kind of what our model is, where we have um, youth go out and they evaluate the community according to the people, animal, and environmental characteristics and resources, and they map those. And then we integrated that with the how do you make a map from A to Z, the points, lines, polygons, how do you add photos and videos, which are really important when you're working with, especially like middle school and high school students, they really want a lot of photos and videos in their maps. They want to tell a story. 
And then we took it online and we did an online course this summer. So we trained teachers from over 84 countries in how to do this whole process and how to incorporate the digital mapping, um, which was one of our most popular lessons. So that was really exciting. And then this was the very first map we created, and this was with a group of first grade students, so six and seven year olds, um, and they helped inform our mapping tutorial from the previous slide. And it was really fun working with this group because a lot of people said, six and seven year olds, you guys are a little crazy. Like, how are they gonna do this? They can't even log into Google because you have to be 13. Um, so the teacher worked with them to do this process. They didn't do it on their own. Um, she had a smart board and she projected it and they would go up and they'd point out things and they'd point out this and that and they'd add things to it. And I think the most exciting thing was the teacher afterwards came to us and said one of the students came up to her and said, hey, Ms. Gossett, we're doing real big people work, aren't we? And they are, they're doing big people work and this is something these kids are gonna remember forever and they had a huge impact in their community too because then they were invited to come and present and talk about, they were doing um, bear awareness, uh, the Florida black bear just got delisted and they're doing all this stuff and the Florida wildlife came and said, hey, we want you first graders to come talk about this because nobody's gonna yell at you. Nobody's gonna be angry at first graders coming and talking about bear awareness. Uh, <laughs> it's true, it's a true story. So that was, um, that was a lot of fun. The thing that's a little bit different about our maps, um, and especially if you ever go to look at any of them, they look really simple and they look really uncomplicated and that's perfectly by design because to work with the broad audience that we do of educators and youth who aren't used to using any sort of mapping tools like this, they literally do still use it just to find restaurants, to find stores and to find directions. And so they don't know these tools exist and it needs to be as easy as possible and as uncomplicated as possible for it to, to grow.